Hello. Om Shanti. And a very warm welcome to this evening's talk. My name is Manda and I've been studying the Raj Yoga meditation with the Brahma Kumaris for the last 39 years. I know you probably think that it sounds a very long time, which it is. It's interesting how though our learnings take gradual and moment by moment opportunities. And I suppose that's what I can say for my own self about this. I've been um, studying meditation for that period, but actually I think I find myself being more busy, more, perhaps busy is not the right word, but um, being engaged in activity often at a very fast pace. And yes, when we think about meditation and a life of meditation, we think that we have to be very slow and very calculative, which, it is, which is true. But when we end up engaging with a, what is passionate for us, then that passion can take on a lot of energetic force. Anyway, what qualifies me to be here and talk to you about today's topic? That's a good question to ask myself. Because today's topic is more patience, less confusion. And I think what qualifies me to speak about it is just that I need it myself. <laughs> it's something that I know I have to work with a lot for my own self. I'm very much someone who likes doing, likes making things happen. I'm very quick in my thinking and often in my responses, often quite rightly so and often not quite so rightly. And so I definitely feel that um, the only thing that qualifies me is that this little talk that we're going to have about patience, um, I have to think of it as me giving that little pep talk to my own self. So here we go. Anyway, I don't know what else to say as by way of introduction except that. So let's just, um, with that in mind, that we're here to explore patience. Let's just sit with that, with the idea of um, maybe assessing ourselves a little bit. Where am I at with patience? Am I patient? If not, why not? When am I not patient? I think it's obvious to say that uh, when there is more patience, there's definitely going to be less confusion. So I'm not sure if I need to address the second part of the topic about less confusion, but I'm sure it'll come up in some way. But generally, to assess oneself, what happens to me when I'm impatient? How do I behave? How do I react? How do I respond when I'm impatient? What is the impact of that on me? What is the impact of that on other people? What is the impact of that on situations and circumstances? So let's sit with a lot of those questions just to go inside this space in ourselves as to really self-inquire at the end of the day, I can say a lot of things, but the only thing that is going to create some shift for you is that um, you look at yourself and you are encouraged by your own self, 
by what you might hear and feel that, yeah, I can work with this. I, work, I can work with these tools. So let's sit with that for a moment or two. Actually, as we sit here, observe your breath. As you observe breath going in and coming out and your chest expand and contract with that breathing. Notice the energy of your breath. Just in your observing, I'm sure you sense of, you have a sense of calmness. A sense of just ease and comfort, really. And just Allow your attention to go inside yourself. Perhaps at the center of your forehead. And become conscious of your thinking and this ability to observe resting behind the eyes at the center of the forehead. Looking out through the eyes. But your attention is actually inside yourself. And you sense this energy of calmness within yourself. whilst you might be looking outside, but you're very centered inside. And in doing so, you create a space and distance between yourself, the observer, and what is being observed. And as you become aware profoundly of the one that's being or rather doing the observing, hold your attention there, not with force, but just in a relaxed but focused and concentrated way. It's really like standing in your house at the window and looking out at what's going on outside of your house. 
And when you watch things from that place, anything can be happening. But you see it as that which is outside of you. And really this is a very powerful practice. This distance, this space, holds you inside yourself. And it would take you time to respond to what's happening outside of you, right? So it's the same principle we're trying to create here. And this state of relaxation is slowing down of your thinking, slowing down of the energy of your body. This slowing down is very useful. So let's just stay here for a moment. And hold this distance as we spend the next 45 minutes together from here on. Thank you. You know, there are some people that are naturally patient. And we admire people like that. I admire people like that. But yet, patience is something that we need to cultivate if we don't have it. We need to cultivate it for our own well-being and also the well-being of others. There are different aspects that require different elements, I think, for us to pay attention to. One is um, the, rec- the need to be patient in our interpersonal relationships with people, right? In our connections with people, in our responses to people. The other is patience uh, of, uh, over a long period of time um, over situations and circumstances. And third is um, patience with just day-to-day living. For instance, um, having to stand at a traffic jam, I suppose. Um, The other is just waiting on the computer for it to respond once you you um, fire up your computer and wait for a particular program to come up. I know someone who used to sit in front of the computer and he would be constantly talking to his computer, but very aggressively. You stupid thing. You, why are you doing that now? Because it would, you know, and the more he did that, the more you, the computer didn't respond to his, his needs and ways. So there's all of that side of things. But the other also is that we're living in an age nowadays of technology 
And we live in an age where everything is at your fingertips. Everything happens so fast. Everything is needed so fast. You know, people having to tell, wait on the telephone for the doctor surgery or I don't know, anywhere to have to wait in the line is very irritating for people. You know, you see people walking along the streets and it's a time to just relax and be easy, but they can't do that. They're on their telephone because this tendency of wanting to be doing things and occupied and and responding quickly. Um, you know, I know someone who says she never responds to her emails the moment she sees it. She will always give it a day or sometimes two before she will respond to her emails because if she gets into the habit of responding quickly, people get into the habit of expecting that response from her every time. Because if she doesn't respond, then it's as if, if it's going to be like, oh my God, what's wrong? Why hasn't she responded? Or whatever. So it's setting the pace, setting the, the principle that you want to work with. And, you know, you can sit at your at your in your lounge and press buttons and and things can happen you know you can nowadays put your washing machine on on a on an app from somewhere else from your work or you can put your lights on from home and and you know everything as is at your fingertips and so quickly so everything is ready all the time and so this also creates this this energy inside ourselves of constantly moving constantly reacting constantly responding and so really, it's, it's, it's about consciously and deliberately creating this space and slowing down the pace. That's the other side of our things. And, you know, the memory of all of these things is, is very strong, not only in our minds, but only in our, also in our physical body. And these responses, this energy constantly fires us up, fires our brain, fires our body up. Now, I was finding out a while back, actually, that um, there is a, a, a hormone that gets re released when you perform a task. And when you get something done, then there is this, uh, this dopamine that gets re released into your brain. And this dopamine gives you the feeling of satisfaction and, and, and a sense of joy while it, it affects your brain. And so, you know, our need to constantly looking at our emails and or Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is that you're or Instagram, whatever it is that you're constantly busy with or constantly attending to, all of these things create an energy of, um, I'm trying not to say anxiety, I don't necessarily mean anxiety, but what I mean is this energy of constantly respect responding and moving and doing and and speed and all of that and as you do that you just get habituated with that and you know, somebody will say something and you're quickly in there so really that's what I I, I would like to uh, address today and that is that what are the aspects that would be helpful to me in responding in these different situations, in relationships, in long-term, perhaps difficulties or outcomes. And patience is the ability to, to wait, I think. I was reading something that, I, that the ability to be calm in potential situations of complications or difficulties. But my sense was that just the ability to wait for any outcome, good or bad or indifferent, doesn't matter. Because before the outcome happens, you don't know whether it's good or bad or indifferent. You're just waiting. You're just, but waiting with peace, waiting, a word that actually kept coming to my mind as I was thinking about all of this, waiting with love, Waiting with trust and waiting with generosity, waiting with humility. These are four very powerful qualities 
that we can learn to explore within ourselves so that we can use those in dealing with situations that require us to be patient. You know, they say that the fruit of patience is sweet. And it is sweet. Because when you wait, when you're um, um, awaiting, that awaiting space uh, somehow becomes an expansive space in which it's not as if no time is enough, but any time is enough. You know what I mean? It's like if you're impatient, then you think, oh my God, you know, it's, it's not enough time for something to happen. But when you're patient, there's lots of time for anything to happen, everything to happen, which is a nice way of looking at it. So you, when I was thinking about my ability to be patient with people, the quality that really was coming to my mind is the quality of um, humility. Because I find for my own self that it's really my ego that really gets um, short with people. Impatience comes when people don't do what I think should be done. Impatience comes when people don't react in the way that I think that they should be reacting or as quickly as they should be reacting, rather. And it's a, it's a subtle belief in myself that um, I know better than they do. Not only subtle belief, but actually that belief also. I know that for my own self, I, I am very much a person who, who likes activity, who likes engaging, who likes to do things, who likes to make things happen. But within that also, where is the seed of that desire to make things happen. Often the external manifestation of this kind of discrepancies, if you like, come from a deeper place of discomfort inside one's own self. More, I should say, they come from a deeper place of um, a lack in myself. Because I feel I lack something, Subtly, I feel it's not so obvious and it's not so, um, um, so easily detectable unless you start to do some really deep work where you realize that your desire, your need, your compulsiveness to externally expect things to be in a certain way comes because there is a lack of that in my own self. The lack of, not lack of that, sorry, I mean to say there is a lack of fulfillment in my own self. There is a lack of deep uh, recognition of, of just myself as being enough as I am. The fact that I am live, I exist, I make a contribution to the world just by existing. And the more I become conscious of my, my specific contributions to the world, the more I begin to become aware of uh, my offerings to the world and to those around me. And if I'm not doing that inner work of recognizing this incredible contribution that I can and I do make in today's world, that subtle contribution of livingness, of um, aliveness, if you like, of intrinsic nature of this human spirit. When I'm not aware of that, then I'm wrapped up so much in things outside of myself actions and interactions. And this lack of inner fulfillment takes on the form of ego. 
only as a protection. I need, I feel the need to protect this vulnerable self that I have inside of me. So this ego takes on this form of protection. This ego then m allow, makes me behave in the way that I do, re react in the way that I do, or the way in which I expect things to happen. And when I do that, it's actually very draining. And so I'm, I'm seeing impatience coming from this place of, or lack of patience coming from this space inside and my lack of ability to sit with myself. Just sit with myself. And fill myself. Feel myself. Truly feel myself. This energy that I am. So that, you know, whatever people do, however people do things, they are okay. They are just the way they are. And everything and everyone has a place in today's world. You know, when you look around the world, when you see uh, so many incredible things that are going on, to have this ability that everything has, its ability to see that everything has its place. And in this place, there is somehow this recognition of everyone's, it, it, seeing everyone's place in this recognition. It's as if my breath becomes deeper. And I am able to truly just be. And there is a calmness that comes, a peace that comes. Out of that is born respect for people, whoever they are, whatever they are, however they are. Can I make my heart so big that, so generous, that my heart is able to accommodate that? You know, when I'm, I, I, I'm increasingly aware that when I speak about these things, it kind of has, has the um, tendency of sounding so simple, sounding like it's all okay and, and it's going to happen like this. But no, I have to pay attention to it breath by breath, second by second, thought by thought. And when I begin to internalize my attention in this way, I slow down the world, my world. As if, imagine everything moving in slow motion. When things are moving in slow motion, then you are able to completely see everything completely observe everything. Every little detail is being observed. You know, if you eat, for instance, the example that comes to my mind is if you eat very, very slowly, then you really taste the flavors. You really taste the food in your mouth. And you can really enjoy it and slow down the pace of that. And you then want to savor the flavor in your mouth as well, right? And so when we can create this distance, when I can create space by slowing down, then I'm able to give value to everything and everyone no matter how they are, how different they are from me, just because they're different, they're not wrong. 
you know, when there is impatience or when there is this lack of deep inner value, um, it also manifests in the form of perfectionism. I want everything to be just the way I think it should be. And it might be good. It might be that it should be perfect and beautiful. It could be. But nothing is perfect in today's world. But what makes it perfect, however it is, is the energy that we can generate together of acceptance, generate the energy of love, generate the energy of um, just being with it, being in, in the company of whatever is. When we learn to empathize with people, with their, um, I don't know, whatever it might be, the, the discrepancies that might exist in their life. It naturally creates this sense of some other, other value, other importance to what we do. What happens, what we do with other people or with tasks? Is it all about the task? Or is it about something else? Is it about sharing, caring? And so in terms of my impatience with other people, definitely the quality that is very important is the quality of humility. And I'm, of course, reminded that what teaches me the lesson of humility, or how the humility, you know, it, and cultivating humility also doesn't mean becoming, being a pushover or being patient doesn't mean being a pushover, being pushed around by people. But when I'm conscious and deliberate about it, knowing about what I am doing, then the energy that I emanate is completely different to the energy that might be present otherwise. If it's like a passive kind of uh, patience, or I can just sit back and just, you know, that's very different to conscious and saying, you know, I give permission for something to be what it is. I allow something to be what it is, knowing that whatever it is, however it is, it's okay. And this is where I feel the quality of trust is also very important. You know, I spent so much time being close to Daddy Janki, um, the head of the Brahma Kumaris who passed away, uh, well, two, three months ago now. And um, she had this incredible ability to trust people, trust situations and circumstances. And when you trust, then it's somehow you empower people in trusting them. When you trust their integrity, even if it doesn't exist, you might have a sense that it doesn't exist. But when you trust people's integrity, when you trust and give them permission, but also hold them. You know, trusting doesn't mean just, okay, letting them get on with it and that's it. But hold the space for them. Share love. Hold the space in the sense that be available to be a point of reference for people. Make yourself accessible to people. Instead of just, okay, I trust them, they'll get on with it, and that's it. And sometimes they find it difficult, they feel they have to live up to what you expect of them, all of that aside. Then that trust is a very powerful thing. So I'm associating patience with trust. In order to, to live a life of patience, I have to have trust in life. And, and um, 
some of you, if you've heard me in the, speak in the last few days or last week or 10 days or something in any of the forums that I might have been there, um, this is something I've been speaking about. So I'm repeating myself, but I don't mind because it's such a powerful thing for me and I remind myself every single day at the moment and I feel quite moved when I think about it. He said, everything in life is benevolent. Everything is benevolent. Every situation, every circumstance, the era, the time that we live in, nature, elements, people, uh, everything is ultimately benevolent. Its form may not be of benevolence externally, but even that form that doesn't seem benevolent, there is benevolence merged within that. Either I have something to learn, either I have to um, develop some quality, some, I have to say, okay, I can't do this, I need some other help, another, another support, any of that. No, well, uh, of course, if you come, if you listen to a Brahma Kumari's talk, there's always going to be the mention of the divine, of the supreme, of God. Nothing but the energy of benevolence. And that benevolence is the seed of our universe. And for me to be able to see the seed of that benevolence in every aspect of life, what else is there to do but just to sit back and allow to know that th there's, there is absolute certainty that all is going to be well. Ultimately, nothing is not going to be well. And I think that these kinds of principles and values make us deeply quiet, less pushy, manipulative, forceful, arrogant. And my sense these days is that this is the energy we have to cultivate. And the only method, of course, to cultivate such an energy is to be silent, to be quiet, to always feel rested to be in comfort inside my own self. Sometimes to challenge myself out of my comfort, but not at the, at the cost of uh, losing myself, but at the recognition, with the recognition. That when I step out of what's easy and convenient, then in that stepping out, my horizons broaden as if my consciousness expands into newness. And so, changing my own physical energy, A, is this kind of mindset and attitude that I've uh, just been speaking about. And for us, this practice of the awareness of ourselves as a spiritual being is incredibly powerful. So, so, so simple. Yet I, the soul, the spiritual energy, conscient, living, thinking, being.
And when I can do that, when I can spend time in that awareness, and somehow time really expands. Somehow my heart opens, my mind becomes still, and there's clarity. There is no room for confusion, let alone less confusion. I would say no confusion. Because this, this ability to really sit with yourself, irrespective of anything else, and of course, we all have, you know, this acquired personality, often aspects of our personality that don't feel comfortable or we don't like. And the irony of it is that we don't even like them, but we don't even know that we don't like aspects of ourselves. But there is a way of, of uh, keeping tabs on those. And the way to keep tabs on those is... When I see I don't like something in someone else, it's a big trigger to see. Because when I'm seeing something that I don't like in someone else, it means that that's in me too. It's just that I'm seeing them in the mirror, in the mirror of someone else. And this mirror, I don't like it. Because I'm feeling something within my own self. So being conscious of that too, and that's okay if there's an aspect of myself that I don't feel comfortable with, but it is present, then I have to sit with it. I have to see how I can change its relation, how I can change my relationship with it. So that I can begin to value my own self. And so there's these, both these aspects. There is an aspect of me that is incredibly powerful, simple, beautiful, and there's an aspect, this, this acquired, habitual ways of being that create discomfort. I see them both. And I pay greater attention to those aspects that do feel, bring me joy and comfort. And as I pay attention to those, then I'm allowing those to grow. But more than that, my sense is that what we're really doing is creating this deep inner state of um, value, fulfillment, recognition of myself beyond what I do beyond what I look like, beyond what I own, beyond what I associate with externally. And this inner deep value that I develop allows me to just sit and be and accept. And also, cultivating a relationship with the divine. This incredible, benevolent, unconditional, constant, loving energy. That I have an eternal connection with. This eternal connection has been there. I've just forgotten it. As I become present in that company.
what is its effect on my psyche? What is its effect on my awareness? What is its effect on the outlook that I have on life? So being in the presence of that energy as many times in the day as I possibly can is very important. It's the one being, the one with whom I have that eternal relationship that never lets me down. Is always ready and waiting and available. How much time do I spend in that vibration? So just imagine spending time in that vibration and energy. And you might say, well, how do you do that? Create a space in your home. A space, whether it's a room, whether it's a corner of a, of a room, where it's specifically com dedicated to being there, taking a deep breath there, in a sense, psychologically shutting the rest of the world out when you're in that space. Create a discipline to be in that space. And as you do that, notice its effect. Notice its effect on your psyche. Notice its effect on the quality of your breath. Notice its effect even in the energy of your body. You know, nowadays they say that the only way to rewire your brain um, and to be separate from this identification that we have so much with our personality is to really enter into that pure, clean awareness of the self as this spiritual energy. Just pure, unconditional spiritual energy. And when you go into that space, in a sense, you can rewrite your own script. Think about the script that you want to create. Think about how patient you want to be. How deeply do you want to be patient? Or is it that when I get frustrated with my impatience, I want to be patient and then I go back to it and I justify it. I make excuses for it. No, if I really want to change, I have to be absolutely, completely determined and focused. And I have to want it so deeply that in that pure conscious state, I can rewrite and reintroduce, introduce rather, the energy of patience. And tied up with it, of course, is the energy of calmness, sweetness, love, joy, space, all of that. So let's just go inside ourselves. I'll do a little guided meditation. And as I do that, really feel the energy that we're creating here together. So I suspect you're sitting somewhere in your home, in the kitchen or in the bedroom or in the lounge. And, and I suspect many of you are not there alone. 
So I'm going to give you a moment to go and find yourself a quiet space in your home where you can just say, okay, the rest of the world is shut out here. So I'm going to give you a minute for that. So I'll be quiet. Go and sit down. You don't have to see the image, but if you want to, that's fine. Some people prefer the radio and some people prefer television. So whatever it is that helps you be still, whatever it is that allows you to be calm and less distracted. Okay, so go find that spot now and sit down. Sit comfortably and relaxed. And as you do that, if you need to, if you wish to, close your eyes, that's fine. Generally, we do meditate with eyes open. Actually, I don't even want to call this meditation. Because if I call it meditation, people have all sorts of connotations with that and they say oh I can't do it this is too hard and it's difficult and all of that but I'm not going to say we're meditating we're just going to relaxed to be relaxed and create some beautiful safe calm peaceful soft beautiful energy. As we observe our breath, breath that's actually a breath of life. It is energy. Breath is not just a mechanical process. It is that, but it's a life-giving energy. In Hindi, we have this word pran. Pran means breath, but pran also means life-giving energy. And this life-giving energy is conscient, living, thinking energy that is pulsating inside your body is who you really are. This pulsating energy, the energy of light, the energy of peace, the seed of benevolence, Because whatever you think, whatever you feel, whatever you do, you're emanating, sharing, giving, even against your conscious wish. So become aware of that natural process of life. Bring about benevolence, trust, generosity, and love. These are the qualities we experience and we feel. In the presence of God, the divine too.
This is who I am. And when I am in this space, the world revolves around me. Not that I revolve around the world. And of course, I don't mean that from a place of obnoxiousness or ego. But this deeply spiritual and profound energy shared with the world only gives back to me what I generate. Notice. Notice how you're feeling. Notice the energy in your mind in your heart, in your feelings, so, so soft and subtle. And that's okay. It takes time to recognize it. Let's sit here for a moment. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And I've been asked to tell you about next week's talk as well by Bill from Spain and uh, I'm going to have to look for the title of that talk so excuse me for a moment the talk is every problem holds possibility and Bill is a very experienced um, teacher of the Brahma Kumaris from Spain and um, beautiful soul. And I know you will enjoy listening to him as well. They've had some incredible experiences in Spain in recent times with the lockdown and all the... They've had thousands of people wanting to her- learn about meditation. And Bill's been one of those people who's been teaching that. So... Enjoy next week also and lovely to be with you all in your lounges, in your, in your homes and um, hope to see you sometime soon. Good luck. Om Shanti.